Music brings us together, even when we're apart. That's why we support Canadian musicians, festivals, and award shows. It's just one of the ways TD's Ready Commitment helps build a more inclusive tomorrow. Welcome, everybody. I'm Asma Mahmood here with uh, Mosaic Noon Talks. Uh, we are presented by TD, uh, and uh, we are here today uh, with uh, another uh, wonderful selection of art and culture celebrating 15th anniversary of TD Mosaic Festival. And um, uh, our program uh, consists of all the talent, uh, various talent who have performed at Mosaic Festival at one time or the other. We are generously supported and sponsored by uh, TD uh, Financial, as I said, uh, Greenwich Health Products, Laziz Shwarma. And um, uh, today uh, we are also going to acknowledge, uh, as always, uh, the indigenous people whose land we live on, Anishinaabe, uh, people from New Credits, uh, and uh, people from Mississaugas. Uh, so um, we are also supported by uh, Ontario Arts Council, Canada Council, City of Mississauga, uh, and uh, Celebrate Ontario is also our uh, funder. Uh, so today we start our program with... Uh, um, uh, recognizing and paying a tribute to uh, a very beautiful and uh, revolutionary dance director and choreographer from India. Her name was uh, Saroj Khan. Uh, Saroj Khan uh, was a very dynamic uh, dance director uh, and uh, today we will uh, talk about her art, her craft and how she made a huge difference in the way Bollywood uh, reacted towards dance, especially uh, with regards to females dancing in Bollywood, where there were no female choreographers before. And to talk about them, um, we are going to sit down with uh, amazing Dhruv Naik, who is uh, who is going to be with us and talk about all this uh, and uh, Saroj Khan's uh, amazing work that she did over the years for a Bollywood cinema. So I have uh, uh, with me uh, Dhruv Naik. Uh, Dhruv is a very uh, professional dancer. Uh, he teaches dance. Uh, he also is a great support and team member of uh, Mosaic Festival, has been with the festival for the longest time. So I'm going to welcome here with me uh, the wonderful Dhruv Naik. Hi, Dhruv. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's really great to be on Mosaic Noon Talks. I mean, it's weird to be in front, although I've been in behind the scenes for almost 10 years now. Uh, but it's great to ha be on here and it's great to ha just have this conversation with you today. But I really, I talked to so Somet and uh, uh, the best person we could think of who would, you know, from our own team who can give a very expert advice and, right. and talk with a lot of passion about right. uh, uh, that great artist uh, oh, would be yeah. uh, you. So yeah, I'm no, so no. happy to have you I mean, Absolutely. No, for sure. I mean, Saroji, it's just so weird because I mean, I, I've never worked with her and uh, I wasn't, I was not fortunate enough to meet her when she was in Canada, but um it's just i've just watching her viewing oh, just growing up watching her her work and her just her charisma and her passion has just made me learn about bollywood just so much and it's truly the way i see bollywood is actually un unknowingly also has just been because of her um but yeah it's just been a, such a great loss for bollywood I mean, despite like all the new choreographers that have come in time and over time and time with like Remo or in Bollywood, especially Farah Khan or uh, Shama Gdawar, for instance, Saroj Khan has just not, uh, has just been part of her own league and there was never a competition against her. And I feel like that's just such a great uh, true sign of a true legend in her existence for sure. We have a selection of some, uh, a small selection of the dances that uh, Saroj Khan, co uh, you know, com composed and, and uh, choreographed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think let's watch that first and sure. then we'll t take it as a jump off point and start talking more. Uh, Rikshan, uh, let's, uh, let's watch that clip. Mm -hmm. 
without dance i think i'll die that's my life so when i teach i get more life when i teach others it's like life flowing from me it's that way i mean without teaching without showing my dance i don't feel happy i keep on watching others dances it makes me happy <laughs> Oh my god I remember so many beautiful dances like yeah. uh, Nimbuda I think Nimbuda mm-hmm. was uh, absolutely yep. um, stunning in its yep. beauty uh, the, because we never thought about uh, uh, about uh, who directs these dances yep. we always used to think the dance is so beautiful so right. elegant and all so we never thought about that and and then uh, we suddenly came across this this beautiful dance and then we realized that there is this amazing dance being created for women yeah. uh, you know in pakistan i always felt that dances in pakistan were very um, they were not very delicate unless yeah. and until the heroine had her own way of dancing one particular Correct. thing uh, yeah. so so i think th- this was a very beautiful change to the uh-huh. way dance was designed for women yeah dancing. i mean as you as you said before um back in the 70s 60s there were no female choreographers there was just male choreographers who taught female actresses to do as a perform i mean it, i mean there's so great examples back in before sarosh khan even stepped in but sarosh khan was one of the first female choreographer who stepped into bollywood that is dominated by male choreographers and just male dominance in over the industry and just having her drive and her passion and just being that powerful force she was uh and just breaking the norm as is just a true inspiration for any I, dancer and you told me that there was no uh, award for choreography yeah uh, before that so uh-huh. that i think itself uh-huh. is a very big step that she yeah. was able to do that that bring in uh you know that recognition for dance exactly dancers. so yeah, i think she was awarded for ek do teen uh so it was like late 80s um and there were no choreographer there was no like in the bollywood industry for the bollywood awards like film fair or ifa or what of those were star dress award and all those there were no recognized awards for choreographers they were recognized for their work but there was never a significant award given to choreographers and i think sarosh khan was the first choreographer was it was created for her and then ever since then history has been uh created and now choreog- there are the specific department for choreographers so yeah very really it's- awesome yeah it's a, it's it's a very interesting history you know we we always think about hema malini and uh, you know vajanti mala and all these beautiful dancers uh, and we never think about those people who uh, who taught them how to yeah. do these dances and most of them relied on their own classical training but for the all contemporary right. dances uh, they were always dependent on um on uh, these uh, these yeah. choreographers male yeah. choreographers and surj khan i think did a fabulous job when she Absolutely. stepped in and took women and gave them that delicacy yes. uh, that uh, that beauty you know um, in that exactly so, i mean like sarosh khan i mean there there has been so many uh, choreographers who mainly focus on movements and stuff but sarosh khan was the only choreographer who taught how to dance with just this and just your face and like the nazaka the like you said the elegance delicacy and like just uh the elegance that comes just through here and sarosh khan somehow crack the code for that and just without anything and if you just give me the camera up to your face and she just with her eyebrows and just the looks and the way and she just taught everyone how to like madhuri I and know, the madhuri. Yeah, yeah i think madhuri did uh, uh, the biggest credit goes for dancing with with madhuri yeah uh so yeah sure <laughs> i'm all for madhuri <laughs> yeah no i mean we 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 learned all about madhuri from ek do teen and we exactly. just saw that she she was i think called the ek do teen girl as well yeah, yeah, for yeah. that yeah i mean yeah i mean it was it was i mean ek do teen was her song uh, so ek do teen dolare 
um and yeah, I, I, think, i didn't know honestly yeah. i didn't know that she did the dolare because yeah. that is so, such a beautiful mm-hmm. dance yeah, so yeah. elegant yeah. I, i had no idea and yeah. uh, uh, and that's when you know i i um i will you know say i would go, i got into understanding mm-hmm. what these these kind of dances were doing for um yeah. india uh, and and bollywood uh, kind of uh, uh, really it was it was a stunning dance you know mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, i i really think in the, uh, it, it's such a loss uh, you know yeah. when you think about it and the, the tributes that are coming in are so rightly so we yeah. uh, we see shamak dawa uh, you know a big part of music festival as well right. but uh, when you realize um, how uh, far reaching the impact of uh, saroj khan's dancing was yeah. then you realize that there was a whole, whole new genre of dancers and right. uh, uh, interest in dancing that was created um so so thank you so much dhruv for no. being with us and talking Absolutely. about uh, yeah. that brilliant uh, dancer no uh, she was so, brilliant yes but you know that we have a treat coming up uh, in you know today and uh, we are uh, here with the, the amazing amazing wonderful um uh, hania aslam who, who is uh, with us all the way from pakistan and hania is the star of our day to day thank you very much for joining us hania uh, and uh, people uh, know hania aslam from uh, the days of uh, coke studios even hania fame uh, and uh, thank you so much for joining us today hania aslam thank you for having me asma pleasure to be uh, here How are the things going in Lahore? Uh it's not bad actually. Okay. Uh, they're all right. We're all right. Uh, we've been on pretty strict lockdown um because I have, my parents are old and you know want to keep them safe. I know. So getting a bit of cabin fever but other than that we're doing all right. Yeah, but imagine you the cabin fever your cabin fever is so productive. Uh, you know <laughs> that you have come up with this new song and and Arshad got me the song and it is so beautiful oh, okay. yeah because of the uh, because of the you know the rights and all that we cannot show the the song um uh, on uh, our program but i am looking forward to you playing it for us live today and sure. uh, yeah i look forward to that so hania uh how uh, how did you i thought you were still in canada when i was looking for you and i then i found out that um that you have gone back to pakistan so uh, what what is the uh, what is going on uh, as far as your work in pakistan is concerned and uh, when did you go back so i i have wings on my feet which is also <laughs> what my new song is about um Yeah I've been back here about 2 years I think a little over 2 years now my my mother got ill and I I I'm sort of the only uh, adult child so uh, I thought I'd come back and be with family for a while and uh, there's always work for me in Pakistan you know this country and these people are so kind to me and such a blessing for me um every time I come back as soon as I came back I got picked up by Coke Studio again uh, where I was I performed also and I was an editor with them and since then i've gotten uh, these great gigs uh, there are all these web series uh, getting made now um so they need um, audio post production people for those so i've been working on some wonderful dramas i did a mehreen jabbar show last year and i'm working on a haseeb hasan drama this year and they're both really really nice um you all should watch them when they come out okay one question which always you know we always get and people are always curious to know How did Zeb and Hania happen? How did Zeb and Hania happen? Wow. Um so we're first cousins, right? My yeah. our mothers are sisters. So we were very very close growing up and I I didn't have a sister, so you know Zeb and her sister were were like my sisters. And uh, her father was in the army, my father was uh, with Air Force, so we were always moving around and through our childhood we would end up in the same cities often. Okay. Um, so then we'd go to the same schools, we'd be playing together constantly. And also our family is very very musical. Our nani, all our uncles and aunts, everyone sang and played instruments, not professionally, but uh, very very passionately. Um so it's just something that we grew up with and whenever we'd get together Zeb and I would play music. We both had uh, an interest in it, bachpan se. 
and um, then when we were in college, uh, we started writing songs together. And I don't know for me, Zeb and Hania is just this massive snowball effect where you know one day we sat down to have fun, you know, shugal me kuch gaane banaye, and uh, the next thing we know, you know, we were on Coke Studio and we were celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> How did Coke Studio happen? Again, I mean, everything with us has been so sort of serendipitous and um, organic. Uh, we finished our album in the winter of 2008. Um, no, in the winter of 2007. And 2008, uh, uh, spring, we put out our first video, the Saqib Malik directed Etabar. <coughs> and um, Gumby, who had <clears throat> really helped us arrange and record our album, was on Coke Studio right from uh, the first season. And he told Ruhail about our album and he gave our album to Ruhail and Ruhail later told us <clears throat> it was raining in Karachi and he went for a drive and he popped our CD in and he just, he really, really liked it. And the next thing we knew, we got a call and we met and met, uh, went and met him in Umber. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just how it happened. All right. Our, uh, Council General LA is watching the show, Shweb Server. Oh. He is there watching the show. Thanks for joining us, Shweb. Uh, and uh, we have Narm Jamal, who is here. Namaskar, Mrs. Saga. Thank you, Narm, for joining us. Samina Talat is there. She takes out time from her busy schedule to watch this show, and she's a huge fan of yours. Um, and um, But tell me something. Uh, when, when you guys started Coke Studio, uh, do you know that um, Coke Studio uh, ha- actually... Uh, you guys got such a huge compliment from the amazing uh, Benny Deal. He called you guys the Simon and Gar. You and Zeb, he called Simon and Gar uncle of Pakistan. Oh, wow! Oh yeah. my goodness, that's, that's <laughs> a very very big compliment. Thanks, Benny. Yeah, and uh, and you can see that in his uh, interview when it. Uh, but what what made you go into uh, the sound, sound design, and sound? You are sound engineer, and I That's I feel right. very excited about calling you as a sound engineer as well. We worked on a when I did the ad for with for some car company in yeah, and yeah, you, you did the sound for that. How did how did you um, go about working as sound engineer for for you know? We don't see women so, in that uh, area. Yeah, I, I inevitably in my life, wherever I end up, I I'm surrounded by men. I mean, that's also because there are you know mostly men in most of the fields. But uh, so I, I was a computer science graduate uh, in my undergrad, and I love technology. Um, I love anything to do with computers, anything to do with software, and of course anything to do with music, and hence audio. Uh, so about six or seven years into Zeb and Hania, I realized that, you know, more than being on stage and performing, I loved being in the studio. Um, because for me, that was exciting. It was a space where I was constantly learning, you know, from the producers and the engineers who were working with us. And I was very, very curious. And also that's the space where you get to be creative. On stage, you've already prepped everything and everything you know how what's going to go down and hopefully everything will go down the way you want it to. But in the studio, the possibilities are limitless. That's where you get to experiment. That's where you get to be creative. So I, I kind of, I decided that, you know, the stage was not where I, I, I wanted to be. Um, I wanted to be in the studio. And also I was feeling that my knowledge of music was, was limited and it was limiting me in, in what I could achieve. So I wanted to further my education and after a <clears throat> bit of research, I decided that more than learning any one tradition of music, it might be more useful for me, even as a musician, to learn music production and audio engineering. So which so was I the first, uh, first song uh, that you guys did together? Can you uh, do a few lines which, which you think was the one which, which uh, opened the ways for you? Sure, that's easy. We were called the Chut Girls for a very long time. What was um, that for? So Chup, Chup was our first ever song that we wrote ah, together. Okay. And it became, I like to say, it became viral even before <clears throat> social media. We were both in college and it sort of went viral over email um, to all the Desi students uh, in North America and then back to Pakistan. So I'll just sing you a couple of lines of that. Sunt 
सुनते सुनते मेरा सब तो खत्म हुआ बस बातें बहुत हुई अब तो प्यार का वक्त हुआ तुम जानो ना मेरे दिल में है क्या ये चाहे क्या तेरी आखें सताए मुझे पास बुलाए मुस्कुराहट मेरी हो रही क्या सोचो lovely and so who who was writing the songs and who was so you were composing the songs and and writing you guys were doing so we together were both, we both we both wrote and composed <clears throat> the way it usually worked was i would sort of come up with an idea um which was usually the chorus and then i would take it to zeb and she would take the song further so for a lot of the songs it turned out you know i wrote the chorus and she wrote the verse um some songs would were, were written differently but um but yeah we had a really really great collaboration so what was your inspiration what what inspired you guys to get into the on music the kind of music you were making what was the inspiration who do you think you uh, were looking up to in in creation of your music um so at that time when we started i don't think we were aware um of of the influences we were drawing from uh but later as our styles developed you know as we uh, went further musically it became obvious uh, who we were drawing from most heavily uh, personally for me um uh, benny mentioned simon and garfunkel i love american folk sort of acoustic folk music so i love simon and garfunkel and others like nick drake and susan vega and leonard cohen people like that then locally i i grew up like the first songs that i ever learned and sang was sohel rana's or unki uh, he had released a cassette or a series of children's songs in urdu and my mother had bought it for me and every day i would listen to that tape over and over and over again till it you know got destroyed and i had memorized the entire tape i think i was about 6 years old and there was a 6 minute hummed on that tape which i knew from end to end and even though i didn't know what it was about i would just uh, sing it through and then um, of course grew up listening to rd berman um sd berman so really really varied varied influences okay uh now listen we have a we have a, a system here uh in place where um okay. we ask all artists who come in uh, to give us a song for the next artist who is coming for the uh, td mosaic noon talk and okay. uh, uh the artist before you were uh, was uh, of course uh, uh, ali sethi so oh, wow. ali said to us and we said ali hani aslam is our next artist so you mm-hmm. have to tell us which song do you want her to sing for us okay. and uh, ali was like oh we are doing something interesting and yeah. maybe she would like to sing uh, that song for you so uh, we will ask you for uh, for that song and uh, we wow. will also ask you to suggest a song for our next artist who is going who is um bashir uh, up, oh god uh, don't tell me <laughs> javed bashir so javed oh, bashir is the next yeah. artist uh, who is coming in on thursday so please do let us know which song you you want him to sing so right, uh, right. that we'll ask you later on but for now do you think you can complete ali's request for the song I will try uh, if I can Okay I think I I I don't know the lyrics this is this is his song uh, that we're uh, doing I I hope this is the song he meant because it's not released yet but I'll just uh, hum you the main tune Ah If I can remember it Mm, it's to <clears throat> <Yeah>. <laughs> na 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 
It's a really nice song. It's beautiful. Uh, it sounds really here. lovely. We can't wait for it to drop. <laughs> yeah, me either. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, so this was beautiful. Uh, Zahania, uh, what do you think, the, you know, when you started listening to Suhail Rana? As a matter of fact, honestly, I had Suhail Rana in my uh, list of questions. <laughs> that okay. Suhail Rana, uh, jo, jo, the way he uh, composed music and all, uh, the a big name, uh, I think the pioneer of modern uh, music sensibilities in Pakistan. And Ruhel Hayat, how he took Coke Studio to the totally different direction. Uh, what do you think uh, is was special between these two, and you know the time period between their uh, their talent and their music making and composing? Your views about that? Um, so for me, they're both incredibly important. So Hail Saab was the first composer that I I heard. Um, and also uh, that, that the show he would have on TV, he basically had a choir of young kids out of whom, you know, we got amazing singers, Hadika, Kiani Ji, Nazia Zuhib, a lot of our current, um, you know, stars actually came from, from that uh, choir of his. And then listening to all his music, um, I think what he did really well was, was um, fusion uh, back then. He basically took West, Western instruments and Eastern melodies, and he put them together in such an effortless way. And it, they all sounded so very natural, and it was something new and exciting. So, you know, it was um, of interest to, to young people and, and old people alike. Um, and oddly enough, I think that's what Ruhail did. Uh, Ruhail did too, about 30, 30 years later. Um, well, earlier with Vital Signs also, which also another band I, I loved when I was a kid. But Coke Studio, again, that's what he did. He took Western instrumentation and Eastern melodies and put them together in, in, in a beautiful way uh, so as to make them more accessible to a wider wider demographic of people. Do you remember any of the songs that you learned from Sohel, uh, Sohel Rana? I do, uh, I do. I, I used to sing them constantly when I was a kid and I actually, when the quarantine started, I uh, started doing a cover every day on Instagram and I did almost 40, 40 covers. And the, one of the covers that, that people liked the most was um, Dosti Aisa Nata. All right. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll strum a few bars of that for you. Please. One of my favorite songs growing up. Oh, it's our anthem. It was our anthem. Right? <laughs> oh, yes. Dosti Aisa Dosti Aisa जो सुने से भी महंगा जो सुने से भी महंगा जहर हो जहर हो हो यही तुमसे कहना दोस्ती what a great song. We have absolutely marvelous songs. I think uh, the, the contribution of Sohail Rana can never be, uh, you know, um, uh, looked uh, overlooked because uh, he was the first artist I wanted to be on the on the show. But I think he's, he's facing some uh, challenges nowadays, health challenges and so on. But, uh, we hope, you know, hope we, we will get him to come and, uh, and uh, be on the program too. Uh, so... Uh, oh, I've got such so many people <laughs> watching the show from uh, from Lahore, Murad, and Ambarkazi is there, and and uh, we have a friend of yours here as well. Uh, surprise! Michelle Irving is here with us. No way! Oh yes, way! <laughs> What's up, Michelle? Hey. hey, Michelle. Good to see you, man. <laughs> you too. I, th I thought I'll give you a surprise, and I'm Michelle so glad is you did. Here. <laughs> this is the best surprise. 
<laughs> yes, um, Michelle Irving is a sound engineer and uh, she has been very active in Toronto scene and uh, uh, Michelle uh, is a very dear friend of mine and when one day we were talking and Michelle said, oh, I know Anya Aslam as well and they've, they've been working together. So I thought I'll introduce the two friends through this program. So uh, did, yeah? it's, been, uh, it's been a couple of years. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, like, um, how's it going? With I've seen your new studio set up over the last yeah, years, yeah. And, and I've made my and, I've made my happy place out here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what so, I did? I, one of the first few uh, times that I met Michelle, she was looking for a a budget five point one studio um, to mix one of her projects. So I've set up my own five point one studio. Excellent. I, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, so, uh, listen. Uh, in Canada, how was how was your experience in Canada uh, when uh, when uh, you came uh, down there and you studied here as well? Mm -hmm. So, and how did you meet Michelle? Uh, Michelle, I met through through mutual friends, uh, Sanya and Sari. Sanya and Seth, I think, introduced us. And uh, and Michelle was an audio, so she was a really really great resource for me uh, through the years that I was there. Um, but it was it was cool, Canada. So basically, uh, what's really interesting is in Pakistan because there's there's a bit of a vacuum in the industry. Um, so when you start and you get some attention, at least you know 10, 15 years ago, you got sucked right up to the top. Um, so as a musician, as a band, you know we didn't get to go through the grind, which is what trains you. It teaches you all the skills that you need to know. Um, you start and all of a sudden you're at the top of your field, which I don't know it doesn't it didn't sit right with me. Um, so in Canada, what I did was I did the course uh, at, at Trebus, and then I started from the bottom. Like I, I, I was a, I was a roadie, and you know I was lifting speakers in 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 you know clubs at concerts, and um, started working on student films and all. So it was really nice to sort of understand the workings of an industry from the ground up, which is something that I I didn't get to understand in Pakistan. So I think both both the industries had something to offer. Uh, Michelle, what impression did uh, Hania give you when, when you guys met uh, and, um, uh, you know, about a girl from Pakistan? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was really, of course, impressed with Hania's musical talent and also with her, like, chutzpah to go into an engineering program here and just, like, kind of, uh professionalize like in like you know learning about the whole process of mixing and mastering and then five one and and i think it's really um it's not uh easy um to imagine yourself in that space um particularly as somebody who is sort of newcomer to canada but also as a woman um it's more of a you know most often these programs, the people who enroll are 20 something year old, you know, white guys. Um, so, and very much the industry looks this way in Canada still. Um, so things are changing. There's way Did more Did you not tell what a big deal Hania was in her own home country? Yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know until like we met and got to know each other more but then I realized like holy cow you know like a big deal and to have to you know sort of rebuild here like I'm, I'm sure is a really uh, a big challenge yeah uh, so uh, we we are in um, you know in Pakistan the coke studio did you uh, uh, catch some uh, performances from coke studio that Hania uh, did earlier and is doing now uh, earlier, yes, yes, I did see some of, of this work, and that was a great that was a great uh, opportunity that you had there. I mean, I would love to hear more about that experience. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, so, so, uh, uh, what is uh, uh, that uh, you are? Uh, do you guys uh, communicate nowadays, or is there anything that you guys would like to work together on? <laughs> what is the exciting part? Because now we are all sitting so far apart, you know, in these uh, times of COVID-19. Uh, so, uh, do long distance collaborations look like a nice idea? And now they are very much a possibility. Uh, so, 
Any thoughts? Yeah, for sure. I, I think what's great about our work is we can do it from anywhere in the world. You know, audio audio can be done uh, remotely. Michelle um, has uh, recently st- been working at this um, post-production house, which looks really cool from everything that she's been sharing. And she's been, re- been doing really, really cool work. So I'd love to, whatever next TV show or movie I get on, I'd love to take it, you know, bring it over to your production house and hopefully get to visit Toronto again. It's been way, way too long. That would be, that would be lovely. I, I keep, uh, I have put Hanya's name forward for a number of uh, scoring opportunities Sweet. in the past, you know, but uh, so far we haven't had an opportunity to, to work together most recently, but uh, I know at, at some point it will, it will happen yeah. again. Yeah, I hope the things get better. And then, Michelle, you visit her in, in Pakistan. I'm really keen. You to. Every time you end up in, in Greece, so maybe one of these <laughs> <laughs> holidays, you have to go to Pakistan. That would be great. Um, That'd uh, be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, um, and, um, uh, so, Michelle, thank you so much uh, and uh, for being here with us. Uh, and Ahanya... Uh, has just done a new song. So, Hania, can we just listen to the new verses, new song that you are... For sure, for sure. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Michelle. Great to see you. Good to see you, man. All right, so this song I actually wrote in, in Toronto. And um, it's I call it my minstrel song. And it's just about, you know, how the life of a, a traveling musician, you know, takes you places, shows you things, and um, turns you turns you into... You know, something entirely new. So here we go. Beautiful. So lovely. I heard this song and I was like, um, uh, you know, we have to, we have to listen to this. It's it's a beautiful song. And and it is now on, uh, on uh, Spotify and all that. Yeah, it's on all the streaming sites. Excellent. It's lovely song. Thank you. Thanks. Lovely. So uh, tell me what, uh, the, uh, how do you spend time? Uh, and nowadays in uh, in Lahore, and uh, what are you watching in terms of uh, uh, television? Something interesting? I'm watching way too much. <laughs> I've <laughs> I watched much. all the shows and then seen them again. Um, no, I'm I'm a huge fan of um, old British murder mysteries. I'm basically you know a middle aged woman <laughs> at heart, <laughs> so I love watching like Poirot and uh, Morse and and all of those. I've seen them like a hundred times. Um, but more recently, I've I've discovered these new Indian um, shows uh, on Amazon Prime and Netflix. Yeah. Um, so, which I'm really really enjoying. I saw one recently, Taj Mahal 1989. Okay. Um, which was really really nice. Um, so yeah, they're keeping me busy. Like I said, I'm I'm working on some dramas. I'm doing the yeah. audio post and mix for them. Keeps me busy, and uh, yeah, life life goes on. Fabulous. Uh, no, uh, have you seen the Canadian Shits Creek? I haven't yet. It's on my list. A friend of mine told, told me. Oh, I it's must a fabulous show. It. You must watch yeah? it. It's a Canadian right, show and worth your penny. <laughs> that's <laughs> totally. next. That's and next. Uh, what about Mindy Kaling's new show, Never Have I Ever? I saw that. I really liked it. <laughs> no, I really enjoyed show. it. It was really nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, so what about uh, what is uh, happening in terms of uh, Pakistani drama? How do you feel Pakistani drama is moving on in its own directions? Uh, what kind? Uh, what motivates you to take up a project? Um, so, so these are very interesting times. Um, you know, the music industry has been in overhaul. Uh, has been overhauled over the past decade and a half, two decades, mm-hmm. and the same is now happening with television because of um, you know Netflix and. Hulu and all these online streaming sites. I think basically TV channels um, are nearing the end, and content yeah. is just all fi- um, shifting online. Yeah. So what what that's changing in Pakistan is the rules. The rules have changed. Okay. Um, you know all, all all the limitations that we had to work under within Pakistan, which whether it's censorship, whether it's you know respecting cultural norms uh, and ideas uh, whether it's rates of payment to technical people um, so within the local industry audio has always plays played a very minimal role um, till now uh, usually a lot of times the video editor themselves do the audio work too and if you listen to a lot of our dramas unfortunately if you listen with a critical ear you will understand you know that that it, they're not doing a great job with the audio but uh a lot of pakistani dramas have been commissioned now by online streaming networks and since they require technical international technical specifications to be followed so now proper sound engineers who know how to meet those technical specs all of a sudden have a lot of work in pakistan so i i came at the right time and i kind of plugged in good and also so so i mean the the, the quality is much better the scripts are great um they've been shot so well i'm st- i'm really really impressed uh with with the performances that the actors are giving uh, a lot of the credit goes to the directors too and also i get to do my audio work and i get to you know do a good job which i'm really really happy about so it's kind of i think it's raising the level the technical level of our drama lovely you were talking about the taj uh, the drama in yeah, india yeah. and sharmishta chatterjee is with us online <laughs> she's watching ah, you and she's the one who sang the title track for that yeah and i know she also know. has a request uh, oh. sharmishta has a request it's um, a song she uh, she asked you to sing for you know urdu blues urdu blues oh etbar yeah, yeah. Do you have time should i sing a bit of it so and um, yeah and parveen malik has just joined us and paroapi is here you so know paroapi's son sakib actually did the video <laughs> for this song all right all right here we go har su hai tu mujhe so beautiful it what an what an incredible time for musicians now you guys are curating yourselves yeah. you know um uh, uh, this is i think this is um, absolutely magical time i i know there are artists there are so many challenges and all but like theater artists or painters or actors i think they all have their own challenges because they needs a, a, a certain requirements around them in order to fulfill their uh works but the writers the poets the the musicians i, I have have a free uh, you know that there's this amazing outlet that they have in front of them absolutely so and and enforced isolation i feel difficult as it may be is is actually a very necessary thing for writers and composers because you got to sit alone with yourself for at least a few days until you know the boredom sets in and forces you to, to work 
Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's it's a uh, uh, we we do have lot to th- be grateful for as well. Besides the silver linings, the, yeah, yeah. And I think it is a, it's an it's a reminder to all of us that you know ease up, back off, slow down. Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, Hania, we also have a a special round uh, of uh, you know round with our artists. Uh, and uh, I like this round because this gives our artists an opportunity to uh, think of quick answers. Um, so I have a question for you. Okay, Guitar. Acoustic Guitar. or electric? Acoustic. Okay. Uh, Sunset Boulevard or Sunset Boulevard? Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. Dal Chawal or Nehari? Dal Chawal. Okay. <laughs> I think I've got so few questions. I I was I kept thinking I have to ask Hanya a, a lot more about her music and her you know. I, they, but there are questions coming in, and one question which I I have to ask you is uh, why aren't uh, Hanya and Zeb doing songs together? So Tanzila Asif Murad is asking from Lahore. All right. Um. Well, I mean, I was uh, telling uh, Asma earlier. So I decided back in 2012, 2013 that um, I didn't like touring and being on stage didn't really suit my temperament, and I really prefer, much prefer to be in a studio. And then I went to Canada, did a course. Um, so I actually shifted a lot of my work over to audio post production for film and TV. So I don't actually do music uh, all of the time. And in fact, for quite a few years, I, I didn't do music at all. I didn't write songs. I didn't sing. I didn't play. um it's only since i've come back to pakistan i've been writing over the past few years and i've kind of reestablished myself uh, work wise and i thought you know it's time that i put something out so you know zeb's been on her own path she's been working in film she's worked in bombay done a lot of other work so we could have gone our gone our own separate ways and sort of growing growing as musicians in our own our own rights I hope Excellent. that answers your question. Excellent. So what's coming up? What are you looking forward to? What what should we be looking forward to from Hania Aslam, the uh, composer, the uh, singer, uh, the sound guru? <laughs> um so a lot of exciting things actually before uh, before the uh, pandemic happened, um my studio was super active. Um I had a bunch of really really unbelievably fantastic uh, young uh, new newer artists coming into the studio and recording demos uh, for a, for a project which has since um, sort of gotten cancelled but um, other than working on some of my own new songs too <clears throat> i'm working with these newer artists and i'm going to be recording uh, singles with some and albums with the others so just just looking forward to you know producing really really great music from from myself and from other people and uh, yeah that's something to look out for so who are your inspirations uh, in in music from uh, you know from bangladesh india sri lanka from south asia who are your inspirations who you think you feel that their music is something that speaks to you oh god i've i've grown up listening to to music from india um so all of the I, i so i was a very odd teenager you know when everyone else was listening to take that and backstreet boys <laughs> i was listening to op nayar and sd berman very very loud <laughs> so i love i love the old composers and those guys because they were i i feel they were much closer to sort of the folk traditions and the classical traditions at that time but then they were also innovative and you know they started sd berman actually did so much fusion back in the 40s and 50s Uh, which we don't give him credit for but you know i heard slide guitar for the first time in his songs um, bongo drums sort of african percussions so they were incredible uh, very embarrassed to say i i don't know names from the other south asian countries but um, i love bangla folk um, you know I, people are persophiles or or indophiles i'm a bangla file um, i love bengali Absolutely. literature i love bengali music i mean there's something about them which just brings out the most beautiful art yeah. so i do listen to a lot of bangla folk both from india uh, and from bangladesh and um, yeah so just i mean it's kind of even without realizing it everything that i've i've grown up with has just seeped in and merged all together and okay. you know you 
Hania Aslam, the composer, is going to uh, ha- has an access to uh, this this opportunity where she can choose anybody from the world to put a concert with. Who those wow. people would be? Four people. Uh, wow. Are, are the singers? As singers, uh, musicians, or well, whoever. This is your pick. You you have an access to them. You are picking. Okay, um, so I'm I'm gonna go with musicians. Okay. Um, so Justin Gray, dear friend, oh. uh, engineer and uh, bassist, also based in Toronto, and then um, Ankur Mukherjee, who's a genius, genius plug string player in Bombay. He plays every plug string instrument you can imagine. Hand him a rabab or a mandolin or a guitar, and he off he'll go. And uh, uh, Michael Minograd, clarinet player from New York. And the fourth would be Nahme Ferromand. Michael is with Sandhara, yeah? Michael is with Sandhara. And then yeah. uh, Nahme Ferromand, <clears throat> who's an uh, Irani-Canadian uh, percussionist, also in Toronto. I played one show with her and she blew my mind. Um, Excellent. So that's, that's my dream team right there. Fabulous. So, uh, so considering there are so many of them, I already know. Um, uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, when the things get better, when we get the vaccination, when we are all together in good times uh, coming back, uh, I hope we can fulfill your desire and you'll um, have the uh, uh, an opportunity to jam with all these amazing, amazing artists. Uh, meanwhile, you know, we are coming to the end of the show, but I have to ask um, the, you any particular request from Javed Bashir Saab who is coming up oh, next. Oh Javed Saab, oh my god he's unbelievable. I think one of the first um, brain melting experiences in my music career was when we were standing on the Coke studio set and uh, we were recording Chal Diye and he started on his alab and I just went into another zone altogether. Like, I can't believe this is my song and this unbelievable vocalist is singing on it. Um... So yeah, if uh, he could, uh, if he remembers Chaldi, or actually, uh, I love his uh, Aaj Latha Nayo from Coke Studio. So maybe you could ask him to sing that. Aaj Latha Nayo. Ji. Aaj Latha. Okay. Latha Nayo. I have to write it down, otherwise I'll forget it. <laughs> He's got I'm with you. Everything goes into my phone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Hania, it is uh, such a such a pleasure to have you with us today. It was so much fun. I hope our Likewise. audience also enjoyed uh, uh, talking with the, uh, our talk uh, together. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you uh, soon in Canada for a gig, most uh, and preferably on Mosaic stage. Uh, so. You you look after yourself. And uh, we will uh, meet again. Uh, meanwhile, uh, thank you everybody for joining us uh, for TD Mosaic Noon Talks. Uh, this project is uh, presented by Canadian Community Arts Initiative, a non for profit organization, home for uh, TD Mosaic Festival, Rock the Coliseum Indie Music Festival, MISA Film Festival. We are also uh, the uh, very, very uh, pleased to get uh, the sponsorship and support from Green Edge Health Products and uh, Laziz Shawarma and also uh, support from City of Mississauga Culture Division, Canada Council, Ontario Arts Council, uh, Heritage Canada, uh, Celebrate Ontario. Uh, thank you very much for Rakshan Mushtaq, who is our technical director, Sumit Ahuja, who is my assistant, and to the entire team of uh, CCAI Board of Directors and members. Thank you so much. I will see you this Thursday when we will have another wonderful guest uh, and Javed Bashir Saab uh, will be with us uh, and uh, I will see you then. Ciao. Music brings us together, even when we're apart. That's why we support Canadian musicians, festivals and award shows. It's just one of the ways TD's Ready Commitment helps build a more inclusive tomorrow.